Honorable Provost of HSNC University, Dr. Niranjan Hiranandani, Mr. Ravi Gupta, CEO of Framebox, Mr. Vishal Kauji, General Manager, Technical Framebox, Mr. A.D. Avil, Founder, CEO, XORM, XROM of Immersive Technologies Studio. Dear teachers, students, parents, and all dear friends, a very good afternoon to all of you. Thank you very much for joining us once again to this series two of counseling session. This special webinar organized for all of our students across schools, colleges, and universities on gaming industry about augmented reality, about uh, virtual reality, and artificial intelligence. Friends, we all have grown playing video games, different types of video games. We have used console boxes to mobile phones, to computers, iPads, and the interest in this field has been ever growing. The fascination never ends. So gaming is one such industry, which is nothing but the confluence of art and technology. Today, we talk about creative technologies, immersive technologies, future technologies, you give any name or interactive technologies, it all comprises about your creative abilities. And most of us are curious to know about how these interactive experiences are created. So to give you more insight about the gaming industry, about uh, augmented reality, about virtual reality, artificial intelligence, we, are, we have invited experts from different fields, you have had experience of Framebox because this seminar also we are uh, doing in association with the Framebox. I'm thankful to all the experts, CEO, Dr. Mr. Ravi, Ravi Gupta, and also uh, A.D. Evil and Vishal Kauji for coming forward and designing this webinar for all of you to counsel you. I'm sure this session will give a wide perspective about career opportunities in visual technologies and, as I said, creative technology. Friends, before we go further, before I hand over platform to uh, a frame box, let me introduce Dr. Niranjan Hirandani, who is with us in this digital room. And he's the first provost of HSNC University. And it is his vision about this new university that each student should get, should have, should be, should be skilled. And when they move out in the world, market should be ready for them to absorb them. Rather, instead of they getting ready for placements, they should be ready with the startups. So Dr. Niranjan Hirandani, friends, he's a provost, as I said, of HSNC University. But while also running a successful business empire in India and other parts of the globe, he's extremely devoted and dedicated to the field of education. He's a trustee of educational boards of several schools and colleges, which run under Hirandani Foundation and Hyderabad Sin National Collegiate Board. With these few words, I would like to hand over platform to Dr. Niranjan Hirandani, Honorable Provost of HSNC University. Over to you, sir. A very good afternoon. Thank you, Dr. Bagla. Very sweet of you to introduce me so lavishly. Uh, nice to have you, Mr. Ravi Gupta. Thank nice to have Vishal Kauji and Eddie Abel, who's going to educate us about all the new trends that are happening in the latest world of gaming and artificial intelligence. I'm pretty excited uh, whenever I get to hear about these new activities and new thoughts, something which never existed in our minds in education ever before. However, uh, the HSNC University and now KC College, HR College, BTTC Colleges are all going to be the latest in four. We're going to keep you up to speed on everything that is the latest. And this is just the starting point that we are planning in this university in order to see that we are up to date with the latest in the world. Day before yesterday, uh, Ravi and the entire team educated us about artificial intelligence and machine learning and told us how this is taking place in the actual world where all the activities that we do, Siri that we use, Netflix that we use, next, flying drones that we do, 
Alexa that we use all comes part of the machine learning that we are getting into. So that's the new world of, uh, uh, that is the new world about machine learning and artificial intelligence that they educated us about two days ago. Today, it's even more exciting. And what is it? We are talking about gaming and we are talking about virtual reality and we are talking about augmented reality. What's the real, real, real difference between the two? So what is virtual reality? I know about virtual reality a little bit because we use it in real estate. Many times when we want to show an apartment through the visual scenes, all you got to put on is a kind of a mask uh, which you put on your eyes in front of like goggles and you put on onto it and you are able to see the entire apartment. And as you move around, you can see 360 degrees of that apartment. You can also use this kind of a, uh, equipment for the purposes of let's say, uh, visually swimming in the sea, swimming with the fish or swimming with the sharks. So that's how the exact virtual reality works. What's the difference then between virtual reality and augmented reality? So if you have a visiting card or you have an art exhibition, you can actually watch a fish pop out of the screen. And that would be a kind of a, a virtual reality, a argumented reality that we would do. So this is the kind of new thoughts and processes that are now being available to us. And Ravi and the entire team are going to give us a full idea about how this works. One of the ideas and thoughts which come along with virtual reality and augmented reality are the equipment that you use. So when you use virtual reality, you have the seeing scene as well as you could have gloves, which could actually sense what is happening in terms of the movement. So if you have a gaming sense and a screen on the top uh, in front of your eyes, a goggle in front of your eyes, the sensors would be able to sense the way you want to move by the movement of these hands. And this is extremely interesting. How did this all get structured and how was all this uh, ideas worked out? So in the first scheme, we had a virtual reality modeling language. It was called VRML. This got graduated to the next level and we did X3D. And after that, we went into a collaborated design activity, which is called Colada. And then we went on to 3DML. All these you don't have to really learn because this is the progression of the kind of schemes which worked at the back end for the purposes of learning how virtual reality has actually made operation. So how do we use augmented reality? Is it going to be useful to you in the future? Are you going to get advantage of it? The answer is very much yes. But you must know that it is already in use. It's used in entertainment in a big way. It's used for military training when you don't actually shoot the bullets, but you need military equipment are designed with augmented reality. So they don't have to kill anybody and still be able to know that they have done it well and you do it. You can also go to video games parlors and also have uh, various games that work on augmented reality. And I'm sure you've used it long before. However, in the future, these are going to be used for engineering designs. They're going to be used for robotics that are going to be there. And generally to see how images are generated over the real world. So in our real estate business, you could have 3D models created, you could have videos done and information passed on to the customer without him having to actually come to the sites. This is extremely interesting that we are going to find new ways to do it. In this world, lots of big companies are taking huge interest in augmented reality and this is happening with Apple. You're going to see it happen on your phones very soon. Microsoft is going to look at it. Zopper is going to look at it. 
and all these companies are taking huge interest to do so. What's our objective really? Our objective is to see that when you come to any of the colleges of the HSNC University, you will not be only educated with the normal syllabi of yesterday. It will be the syllabi of today. In the sense, all the subjects will be relevant to what is going to be useful to you. But over and above that, it's not possible to learn all skill sets only through the syllabi of the colleges because this college's syllabi is structured in a different sort of way. But in order to complete your education and knowledge about all these exciting new things, we have therefore worked out with Framebox in order to fill the gaps which will give you and excite you about new ideas and new thoughts on the gaming technologies of the future. This is what we are going to have today. I'm extremely excited uh, about these programs simply because they teach me so many new things at one point of time together and which will be useful to me in the future. They're not taught by anybody else as, as, as far as I know about it. So what you're going to learn over here is going to be unique and different. So welcome to the new learning process. Welcome to HSNC University and also to this webinar. Thank you very much, Principal Bagla and the entire team which is here today. Thank you very much to all the teachers, all the professors who are also here, and of course, the wonderful students. I wish you all the very best. Keep safe, keep happy, and looking forward to learn something new today. Thank you, sir. That was, uh, sir, I would really like to thank you for giving us another opportunity to you know, help us share some insight with the students. You yourself have given so much of wonderful insight to the students. Now we would just like to do justice to it and make sure that we can provide the best of knowledge to the students uh, for this exciting industry, as you yourself have said, and show them the way, future, and the, for the right path where they can really learn and make the best of it. So thank you so much for having us once again over here. Um, uh, dear students, hi. Good, good, good evening, everyone. How is everyone being? I'm sure a lot of you guys would have uh, been with us in the webinar we had last week. But for the ones who missed out, I would like to, um, you know, once again get in touch with you guys. Hi, I'm Ravi Gupta. I'm the CEO director at Framebox. Uh, last time we tried to, you know, give you all guys some insight about um, careers in graphics, 3D animation, visual effects, multimedia. <clears throat> Obviously, that's a very exciting industry. Everyone knows. So today, what we're trying to get to you is something even more exciting. I mean, something which is, is, is a automatically passion driven subject when it comes to every individual. So the minute we talk about games, it, it's by default, you know, something that builds an interest. It could be any kind of a game. It could be a board game. It could be a physical game. It could be a game played on a computer, on an iPad. As long as it's a game, it's always exciting. Game is something that not just binds people together, but it's it's a knowledge that also now helps people grow further. So uh, let me uh, start off with a small presentation that I have for you guys, which will try to cover up this inside journey. And myself, along with my team members, Vishal and Eddie, uh, would like to do our best to give you the best of insight in this industry. So without wasting much of your time, let me just move on into the uh, program. Before that, I would like to give you a small insight about Framebox. So, uh, you know, Framebox as a company was started back in 2007. The idea and the objective obviously of Framebox was to ensure the best of quality training, education and uh, skill-based training. That was always the essence, which we always believed. That is something that is important from a student as a takeaway. So with a, with a set of a very highly skilled team with a strong industry connect with visionaries and strong industry knowledgeable people, we embarked on our journey in 2007. And obviously in the course of time, we added a lot of industry expert trainers, uh, made sure these guys are all pretty well updated from the industry and imparting the right quality training that is needed to be part of this industry. 
obviously the journey started off with uh, 3d animation visual effects graphics but obviously over the last couple of years we have introduced even gaming the session obviously today is going to be on gaming so i would not go much into uh, about frameworks because i've already discussed that last time uh, i would state we like to go into the important aspects so besides uh, a brief introduction of frameworks journey that i've given you obviously we have a pan india presence through which we can help cater out to more number of students cover better geographies and ensure that the quality is not restricted to any specific uh, city or a particular state yes uh, the journey is important and in the course of journey we have obviously collaborated with uh, the relevant industry people we obviously have collaborated with a studio by the name of pixel digital we've collaborated with uh, nsdc that is a national skill development council and of course not to mention the least that over a period of time we have been able to train 20000 students plus over a period of time so let me get on to the main subject that we have for today what is gaming what's the journey of gaming that is something that is very exciting so let me start with the journey of gaming would be about thousands and thousands of years back so let's say we are starting off with board games we all as kids as grown up even today play board games it's it's fun of course but that's basically how the gaming industry started off from where we saw in the late 70s we had these ordino video games which were running on a one two byte kind of a capacity but that itself has its uh, good advantages and it was fun to play for the generation which came from that era of time it was a revolution by itself we moved on the technology got us 2d video games that basically was termed as the atari era atari being the popular company that brought about these games and i'm sure even today a lot of you guys would have got your hands on to these 2d video game devices moving forward obviously we got the 3d video games the playstation era which was the most popular era amongst i think your generation of people 3d video games obviously changed the entire interaction and the entire way the games were perceived you know it was no longer restricted to a person playing with himself or playing with a couple of people it overall changed the entire viewing experience immersive technology got this 3d video game technology where it could be interactive it could be more wider it could be open it was not restricted to just a particular standard viewing and a standard process that is followed it gave us a wider dimension and obviously after immersive technology something that has even excited the gaming industry more is definitely ar vr that's the artificial intelligence uh, ai artificial intelligence obviously uh, you had a uh, sir speak about briefly about it but artificial intelligence if i like to elaborate little on it has overall changed the entire gaming experience games today are no longer played with a <clears throat> with a process and the way it was played you know uh, maybe uh, even 5 6 years back it has changed the whole perception today there's no it's no longer that you just restricted to a particular uh, room or a particular wall and you see nothing beyond it ai obviously takes you with a virtual endless experience and that has changed the entire fun and frolic and the entire experience of playing a game has been changed by ai now if you're talking about present world well before we get into that let me tell you what the present world is about let me show you a video which is going to you know give you an insight about how this technology is used in multiple industries can we just play the video for them please
thank you so much for playing the video i'm sure guys you were you all would have really loved watching this video as much as i love it and watch it again and again this video you know just tries to signify that this this technology is not just specifically restricted to game but as sir even mentioned earlier in his uh, speech that it is it is opening up its footholds into practically every other industry you know industries which are never be thought that this thing could come into it game industry obviously we all see it we use it ar industry we do use it but besides that every other industry that we talk about vr industry simulations we are talking about education as you know uh, virtual education is happening training science i mean you you name the thing these are just a few highlights where you know this technology is extensively used but as as sir mentioned earlier even in uh, you know training for the army people uh, training in uh, the real estate industry everywhere you see this technology is widely used okay so i will just give you a few changing trends uh, how this industry is really gained its traction okay so so if you're looking at the indian mobile market has grown significantly over the past couple of years new insights regarding the impact of smartphones on various industries and customer segments are continuously being uncovered in particular the gaming industry is undergoing a massive evolution because of the mobile revolution as well india is one of the early adopters of mixed reality technologies making it a big market this is a quote from andrew bowell he is the vice president products at unity technologies according to a survey on online gamers in india it was seen that over 90% of the gamers with less than 6 months of experience played on their mobile phones that's a huge number overall though the proportion of online gamers who use their mobile phones to engage in the games was very high in india across all experiences level you know these are all basically a few changing trends which obviously the population of india with the curiosity and the the you know the love that people have for these technologies in india is something which is you know just adding on to this whole industry as 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 a whole you know so i will not take much of your time again and i will just give you a quick look at about the gaming industry that the way it has been growing over a period of time so if you have these charts in front of you starting from 2007 and you're seeing the growth of this industry and the future growth as well so obviously it's an industry which is very exciting it's an industry to stay and it's a technology which is going to be running and growing over a period of time and it's an exciting career definitely for each and every one of you guys i would just like to sum it up with a vision at framebox our vision at framebox is obviously to become a coveted education institute to provide the best quality training to bridge the gap between students and the industry and of course to provide a online platform to reach every corner i thank you all so much for listening to me before wasting much of your time let me get you guys started off with this exciting journey of animation and visual effect of i'm so sorry for gaming ar vr and ai let me bring on stage uh, my team member vishal kauji he is the general manager technical at framebox vishal today will be taking you through the insight presentation and understanding of this fascinating and this fancy industry vishal over to you please hello sir thank you for your uh, thank you for my introduction thank you sir uh, so uh, today's session uh, we uh, we are going to get into a little bit about games ar vr and uh, all the things about article uh, artificial intelligence so as ai is a very huge term uh, as you can see we will be not uh, going into the whole ai concept like how it is and how uh, well you can do things with it but then we will be specifically talking about how this ai term is aiding in game ai and vr industry and according to that it will give you just about uh, you know what is this whole ai thing about uh, so um, so today uh, we will be talking about games and immersion and uh, i will be having one more guest uh, who will be joining us for this webinar mr eddie evan which uh, we'll i'll introduce him in in the uh, in, uh, in the uh, coming time so uh, let's move forward 
uh, let's first talk about a little bit about games uh, when it was formed so you can see game is a term which was uh, which is not something which is formed uh, recently it is a, a, a very very um, you know a very old term we have seen we have played games which were not even digital we have played board games we have played outdoor games but as this whole digital revolution happened where uh, things suddenly shifted to a digital screen and people started interacting with with a screen and uh, a whole world was made inside it that's where the main evolution of games started that that's where the game became a commercial world so uh, i will not be getting uh, into a uh, big talks about how the game industry uh, evolved from that time till now but let's talk about let's directly talk about opportunities what we have in the game industry followed by a uh, few videos where we can uh, connect with what i'm what i'm trying to tell you so now uh, game industry is uh, it is same like an it industry now games is nothing but creating a software only but these softwares are considered uh, on the entertainment terms and as i uh, as also uh, uh, ravi sir also spoke about it the game industry is not now only limited to the entertainment or not only limited to creating games but it has also evolved into few different things so that is also what we will be speaking about in this webinar so before going into any other topics let's first cover up what do we have in the game industry so first of all game industry is one of one of the industries in which not only creative but also technical uh, side is required so it's like a good blend between both the, both the sides creative where you create visuals those visuals are going to attract and entertain you as well as to play and to create that experience we need developers also which come from the science background or uh, they 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 do a lot of coding in their career so we have requirements for coders also as well as from the art side also so uh, let's go and get, get into the opportunities what we have for the gaming industry game asset artist is something uh, very important where whatever games you are playing right now you see all those visuals you see all those buttons which you click let it be start let it be the logo let it be the icon all these buttons as well as the characters and the vehicles and the environments which you see in the game it is all created by these people prop artist is one of the opportunity where every prop you see in the game is being created by a prop artist character artist you see all of these characters games like pubg games like um, wwe games like uh, counter strike all of those games all the characters are been developed by these character artists then we have game ui ux artist these are the guys who actually sit down break their heads and create all those beautiful buttons which we click all the time now how those buttons are going to function how many options you are going to see on the screen that is all done by ux artist so ui 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 and ux artist <coughs> these are the two artists who are actually thinking about whether to make this game look simple next is game animation artist these are the guys who actually create animations all the animations what you see all the movements what you see in a game is actually done by an animation artist followed by there are game designers now these are the guys who actually sit down and create that wonderful experience which you feel while playing the level so whenever the whole game if you see it's all it's all connected together you you don't you never feel like this is another part of the game and that is the another part of the game when I, whenever you are playing these different different levels they are so perfectly weaved together that it completely looks like one experience that's all done by these game designers with that you have developers developers play a very crucial role when it comes to creating games now what does a developer do he will uh, he will be packed up with the knowledge of languages he will be packed with the knowledge of which hardwares are there in the industry and depending upon that he will be combining all the art all the animation all the ui and he will start creating the functionality for it so let's say you click on a button say start and your game starts this is this is all done by game developers so those are the magical guys who create all of this thing um, and make sure it is working perfectly on all the platforms finally we have testers so it is not only the developing it is not only the creation process but then before a game to go in the global market and people to actually play it there are a list of there are there are a lot of people who will be sitting and playing that game 
and checking out if there are any bugs if anything is problem in the game if something is not working properly now these game testers are not normal game players these are the guys who actually know how a game is built and depending upon that they'll they they start seeing the bug where exactly the problem is and what exactly the problem is so this is a a, a very simple thing about a, a very small introduction about all the opportunities what game gaming industry gives you now uh, moving forward let's let's get into a small video i don't want you to you know just uh, pass on a knowledge and make this whole webinar boring we'll just get a video and we'll see what are all those stages and how people are doing them so that you get a complete insight about all the processes <clears throat> So this is all about gaming. There are a people. There are a set of people who actually sit down, create all of these hyper-realistic models, textures, right from the idea how the game is going to be uh, created, how the game is going to look, right from that till the uh, till the point how the game is going to be played. This is all one of the. Uh, this is this is one big industry in which there are so many different different teams 
who are working on one specific thing to make sure everything works perfect. Now, after summing up with the games, do you have any questions? Please write down in the comment box if you have any specific question related to games before we move forward into um, into the AR VR section. Okay, so I guess there are no questions for it. <clears throat> Fine. So now uh, let's get into the VR AR zone and let's try to understand. What is this all augmented reality, virtual reality, and this whole immersive technology right from the industry leaders? So I have today with us Mr. Eddie Evil. I'll give you a little introduction of Mr. Eddie. Uh, Eddie Evil is a curious, passionate, and an inter entrepreneur with eyes finally on the uh, firmly on the future and the opportunities in uh, opportunities uh, in the present. He has recently awarded with uh, about 50 Fabulous Innovative Leaders Award at the World Innovation Congress Award 2020. He is also on the advisory board of Lifeboat Foundation, a non-profit organization based out of US, which consists of Nobel Prize winners and some world leading scientists and futurists. So here I welcome Mr. Eddie. Hi, Eddie. Hello, everyone. Hi, Vishal. Thank you for the lovely introduction. Really appreciate and good to be part of this conversation. Kind of like driving the students of the future forward to kind of build the future. Thank you for yeah. having me. Really appreciate this. Sir. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so Eddie, uh, before moving forward with the uh, webinar, uh, I would like to have, uh, I would like to know a little bit about your journey and a small insight about this whole immersion uh, and this immersive technologies. Okay, lovely. So yeah, so I have uh, my background is uh, the, the creative field. I've been a musician. I used to play for a rock band for 20 years. The band was called Pralai. We were the first Indian band to be shortlisted for the Grammys in 2013. And I produce, I basically compose music. I used to compose music. I used to play for a rock band. I used to compose music. I've, play, I've composed uh, music for a couple of Bollywood feature films, uh, advertising, uh, jingles, TV commercials and things like that. And in 2016, early 2016, I discovered virtual reality and my world changed completely. Till 2016, I thought uh, I was so deeply entrenched in music. I, I never thought that I would move out of it. But when virtual reality came and, and it, it was this new thing which hit me and I realized, wow, this is the future. I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a musician. I'll always be a musician. But I think virtual reality goes much, much deeper. It, 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 it uh, you know, if, if you, it's like a rabbit hole. If you want to watch you, if you want to really understand what virtual reality is, I mean, it's, it's like this uh, rabbit hole. You keep on digging it and you digging it and you go deeper and deeper down. So, so just a basic, I mean, to what virtual reality is, I mean, like the, 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 the term itself signifies, you know, we are trying to emulate of physical world so this technology is getting closer and closer and closer to put you into a world which is virtual but you will not be able to decipher between what is virtual and virtual what, what, what is your physical world so, so that's virtual reality a little bit background on me uh, the besides the music thing like i said i got introduced to uh, virtual reality in 2016 uh, i i set up my own content studio and uh, i uh, directed produced india's first uh, stereoscopic vr horror short film it's called crackle it's, it's one of the best vr experience at the miami of your and it's done it's done the festival circuit uh, all around the world uh when i did the film i i, I basically I, I think google was one of the only companies which was making a, a stereoscopic camera rig and 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 few very a handful companies were actually getting getting into stereoscopic virtual reality i jumped into it thinking i was brave and i thought my dada or my dad has got money hold up and i'm a billionaire and i could pump in funds you know so but yeah i realized that you're getting into hardware is, is, is a is, is a wrong step if, if you if you're a startup but uh, i i my, my journey has been interesting so far I, I learned from those mistakes i built a hardware i built an 18 camera rig we directed produced india's first stereoscopic vr horror short film uh, like I said, we, we uh, it won the best VR experience in Miami Fear Fest, and then we realized that uh, 
we did the school work of art but there was no buyers you know if an industry is not sustainable it cannot survive so i said okay what should i do to make the industry sustainable so i founded immersion vr fest which is india's first virtual reality and augmented reality film festival and conference this was held in uh, nehru center it was a two day event uh, we we had around 45 speakers from india and around the world google india ar vr head was the keynote speaker uh, uh, facebook international came down and, and was part of the event it was a very successful event and and this year we couldn't do it obviously because of covid now besides immersion vr fest i do a couple of things so i might just confuse you but i i'd rather tell you who i am so there is a context as, as, with my journey and what i do so uh, immersion vr fest is, is one uh, startup besides that is xr ohm xr ohm is, is like let me just break it down because i i i get this thrown a lot like what is xr so xr is a short form for extended reality which is an umbrella term for augmented reality virtual reality and mixed reality so don't get confused with the jargon it's just one simple thing you know so extended reality and ohm is, is something which i caught on because i thought that i wanted to build a, a platform company which all would also would be the home h o m e home of extended reality but i spelled it as xr ohm now that's a platform company it's got various business legs it's got a media media house where uh I, it's a media publication where i give a platform to startups developers content creators from india and around the world so uh, who are who are doing great content to be to be showcased on the platform besides that i am the uh, i'm the host of india's first arvr mr podcast called xr om podcast i have a e-commerce platform called xr bazaar now that's xr om and that's xr studios the, the where i create content now besides that the xr om it, it's got three four businesses packed into uh, uh, one i'm also the founder of change transform india uh, uh, which which the it, it's got various business like in the first part of the, the of uh, xr om uh, the change transform india is change i am possible podcast which is india's first future tech podcast where i interview leaders and disruptors future tech disruptors from india and around the world who are pushing the paradigm of what is possible so i interview people from artificial intelligence to iot to blockchain to synthetic biology brain computer interface 5g and everything so i am trying to bring in the new and making the people realize that we are at the cusp of the fourth industrial revolution and technology is going to transfer us so my platform is built to raise awareness and make people aware about all these technologies which is coming in together that that's me yeah uh, so uh, uh so so for all uh, all our viewers i would like to just give you a little glimpse about uh, the immersion fest i i i'm always a part of it i make sure i visit the fest Thank every year so i would just like to give you a little glimpse of what it is all uh, all about uh, so can we have a video Uh, so, uh, Eddie, can you just give us a little insight about uh, being a part of this whole MS, uh, immersive technologies and uh, all this immersive tech uh, is all around you, and you hold like a conference of all the big leaders. So, can you give us a little industry insight, like you know, how is this industry, and uh, is it good for students to get into, or how is the future is going to be for this industry? Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's clear. that future technology you know your augmented reality virtual reality mixed reality it is clearly the future like how shall was <clears throat> talking about the 
the journey of gaming. Now, the journey of uh, where we have come till now, uh, it, 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 it started from your 2D, right? Or 2D platform or, or basic interface is a 2D platform. We uh, view content or, or use a phone or theaters, your, your computers, you know, it, it, but we've been restricted by it because it's flat, you know, it, it, that's what I mean, you know, it, your, your phone has almost lost its utility. It, it's not going to go beyond this, you know, there are people who have actually tried now foldable phones. Now, what next, right? So there are some of the biggest companies like Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Sony, uh, Samsung, and so many who have come together and realized uh, that what next, what comes next? So people are working on a single wearable device. That's the, something like this, what, what I'm wearing right now. A, a, a HMD, a head-mounted display, you could call it an augmented reality headset, a virtual reality headset, or a mixed reality headset. We are moving from being restricted to the 2D platform and we are jumping into the 3D world. I, it, it might be a little difficult to fathom what I'm talking about, but it, it, it'll, it'll really help if you guys can like Google or YouTube and, uh, and understand what AR, VR, MR is, what it's, it is going to do. It's basically going to be the next step of evolution where we jump out from a 2D medium. Uh, the future is going to be spatial computing. What I mean by spatial computing is, like I said, we've been restricted by the 2D platform, right? I mean, what we do is like, if, if, even if we are at home, we are watching a, a movie at, uh, on our TV. It, it, it's just a very passive medium. All that you can do is sit and watch. You put the button on and, and you put it off. That's about it. But virtual reality is going to be interactive. It's going to enable the sight, sound, touch, smell, taste. It's going to, like I said, which, which I began with, virtual reality is to mimic everything that is your physical. So it, it, uh, it is going to impact a, a world in ways which is quite unfathomable as of now. So, I mean, to, that's what virtual reality is going to do. But right now, the industry, right now, we, we have adopted in education, we've adopted in healthcare, uh, the consumer, obviously, in entertainment, gaming. The adoption mainly is, is being seen in the enterprise space because we have current drawbacks with the hardware. Like your, your, the, when I say drawbacks with the hardware, the price points, right? The price points are still not there. And when I said that uh, we, we, like Apple, Google, Facebook is working on a glasses like that, this is still maybe a, a two years or three years uh, away, right? So, so those are the current drawbacks. But uh, uh, the enterprise have adopted in a big way. So there's a big opportunity over there. Education is a big opportunity because you're learning it is always experiential, right? I mean, the uh, rote learning has been killing our education sector. Now, just imagine where instead of ratta maraoing, where you, you go through your book and, and you go sit in your exam and, and you write your paper and then you've forgotten all about it, right? What is the purpose? What do you learn from it? I believe education is all experiential. It's, it's touch, feel, going through it you know taking a taking a product breaking it apart joining it back again fixing things problems solving problems is the only way you can go about uh, learning and i think virtual reality is a tool which is enabling that technology though at this point in time when i'm saying all of these that we're getting into the spatial world that we're going to be immersed in, into uh, these virtual environment where we'll be able to touch feel everything it might sound a little unfathomable and unbelievable but this is what is happening currently i'm not saying this is futuristic it's already happening right now and right like i said i mean enterprises adopted it and there's quite a lot of opportunity 
exists in the space of education in space of healthcare uh, and, and and especially gaming because i think gaming is is a big business and it's it's growing rapidly uh, globally it's become uh, gaming has become uh, a bigger industry than the hollywood industry so there's a lot of opportunity it's it's about you uh, as a student knowing that this is the future and, and and taking conscious decisions that okay what do i need to learn these technologies and who do i need to meet who what uh, what mentors do i need to have uh, how do i learn more and, and get knowledge more to start building you know you start building from small because i think that the entire field is in such a nascent stage and we are all exploring but yes there there's lots lots of opportunity opportunity that exists in uh, enterprise largely because the adoption has happened over there because people can afford those vr headsets there vr or ar or mr headsets for consumers is still uh, i believe i think maybe like uh, uh, 3 to 5 years away or maybe more uh, more or less i mean um, um, but yes but enterprise there there's a lot of adoption and there's a lot of opportunity here in india uh, so um Eddie, I have one more question. Like, uh, I also uh, am thinking about. You know, people are talking so much about disruptive technologies. Uh, uh, like, what does it actually mean, and how does it play a role in in the today's world? Is it there? Uh, is it going to come, or what is it all about? Okay, so so you know what we we are in the cusp of the fourth industrial revolution, and when you call when you say disruptive technology, you know first we need to understand what is disruptive technology. I mean we need to understand that uh, just forty years back, computers were at the size of like this room, right? And it, it, it's it's gradually and slowly moved, but currently the computational power has grown exponentially. and it's driven the conversation of each and every technology uh, around giving it the disruptive potential that's the reason we call it disruptive what it means by that is like i'm i'm just going to break it down like what are the disruptive technologies i mean there is so many but i'm just give, i'm going to give you a few examples artificial intelligence internet of things blockchain augmented reality virtual reality mixed reality synthetic biology quantum computing 5g uh cloud computing <coughs> brain computer interface and, and there is so 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 much more now why are we calling this disruptive technology because never in our history has technology come to be so much powerful and so much potentially uh, or to have so much potential that it can it holds the power uh, to change mankind humans as a race so uh, i mean for for people who like i said i have this platform called change from from india i also have a podcast called change i am possible podcast where i interview leaders especially disruptors who are shaping the world so i, I think if anybody who wants to understand what disruptive technology is Please log on to youtube.com/cti-podcast where I've interviewed leaders. For example, I'll just give you a breakdown. I just interviewed Dr. Harold Catcher. He's a geneticist. Okay, so what he has done is that he's figured out that with young blood transfusion, you can reverse aging. So for maybe if you are a you are a seventy year or eighty year old person. right now with the young blood transfusion young blood plasma tra transfusion you can actually reverse aging and now like i said this is not science fiction this is science fact this is science reality which is happening right now and that's the, so that is disruptive where, where, where it's changing uh, mankind where we we will start asking deeper questions where we'll be uh, asking deeper questions as in who are we what are we made of who is god can we actually reverse aging can we can we uh, can death be cured like for example google google's offshoot called calico is working on curing death because they believe that death is a disease now there are some of the top biogerontologist who biogerontologist are basically 
scientists who are working on human age reversal or curing death, if, if you might call that. Now that is disruptive because that goes beyond the uh, understanding of what is normal. So yeah, to 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 narrow it down, disruptive technology is that, and artificial intelligence. I mean, uh, to add on to it, right? So artificial intelligence is divided into three different parts. You know, I mean, it's like uh, artificial narrow intelligence. artificial general intelligence and artificial super intelligence now artificial intelligence has been going on since the early 1960s right but the computational power was not there to accelerate the technology right now the computational power is growing exponentially giving artificial intelligence more bandwidth or more power to go, go drive forward now what is uh, artificial narrow intelligence artificial narrow intelligence is you know something which uh, uh, you, where where uh, uh, you can do something which is narrow like for example object recognition right uh, like there'll be a uh, agent which will be really good at object recognition but you give him say you, you point out uh, uh, a different uh, uh, say maybe like you, you take him give him a complete dif different object the agent will go bonkers it, it will not understand so it's really great at one single thing and even right now those you might say oh so it can only do one thing better but is, is it uh, is it human level intelligence maybe not human level intelligence but it has it has already beaten the world's best for example uh, 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 google's uh, 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 offshoot company called uh, deep mind They 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 have this software there where the uh, deep, deep deep learning uh, agent which has beat the world's best Go player. Now Go is, is a board game which is much complex or millions of times more complex than chess, right? So so that's that's artificial narrow intelligence. It can beat the best human being even right now. Now what is artificial general intelligence? Now. artificial general intelligence is something which is your human level intelligence now there are a lot of people who who i mean there are uh, certain people who say that it's not possible machines will not have human level intelligence but some of the top researchers who are researching in the field of artificial intelligence have given a time uh, <clears throat> a, 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 a time uh, this thing of maybe like some say Uh, maybe 30 years but then there's elon musk who's saying it could be uh, sooner than that so uh, uh, yes that that is artificial intel general intelligence where machines will be able to do anything and everything that we can do much 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 better and then what is artificial super intelligence now artificial super intelligence is once the artificial general intelligence when the artificial intelligence becomes general and it can become smarter than any human being and it has the decision making capability from there to move to asi or artificial super intelligence could be a matter of maybe months or years because what asi in in layman's term it is uh, god got it <clears throat> thank you for explaining us these terms because uh, normally what's happening is over the internet you find so many different different things about one small topic and we get confused but you you made it so clear that i am pretty sure everyone would have understood it so uh, thank you Ed eddy for actually you know bringing such a light over all of these things uh, i'm pretty sure all the viewers uh, will be getting something or the other out of it so uh, so so next would be uh, i would be getting into the process of um, uh, how all of these things are done so uh, so um, so let's move into the process uh, and let's see how how this uh, this can be done i think so uh, for for us uh, for a change you'll also get a break any because right. i i saw you actually getting into you know uh, into into the nerves of the questions and uh, that that sorted a lot uh, also also a few of my questions got answered thank you thank you for having uh, uh, thank you for being there thank, thank you sir thank you pleasure yeah.
Okay, so so moving on to the process. Uh, so these are the few processes which uh, which are there uh, when it comes to an immersive tech industry. Uh, as as Eddie said, it 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 is a huge thing right now. You know, com uh, comprised of AI, comprised of uh, these whole creative uh, worlds which will be uh, which will be created around you. These are few of the opportunities which are there present right now where people are looking out for. Uh, first is 2D content creation, where uh, if you want to create, if you are a 2D content creator, if you create something like a button or maybe uh, something which you can interact with in this virtual and augmented world, then 2D content creator is one of the opportunities which is already there in the industry. Followed by that, there is a 3D content creator uh, industry also where all of these, all of these uh, uh, technologies need a 3d content because as you can see it is all 3d you can go around it you can see not only from the front side but also from the left also from the right and uh, no one knows where the viewer is going to get into so 3d content creators are also uh, something where where industry is looking out for same ui ux artist specifically for ar and vr and this immersive tech these ui ui uh, ux artists will, will be working with a very different mind, mindset understanding or thinking about you know how a user might uh, interact with these objects when they are kept around him followed by experience visualizers so whenever any experiences are created how these experiences are going to be uh, you know liked by people what are their mindsets all of these things will be done by these visualizers moving ahead with ar developers people who can actually write codes only on the augmented reality part is one section of coders what this industry wants right now vr developers if you can target only onto vr only onto virtual reality as you can see these two are different things like augmented reality is where objects are augmented in front of you 3d objects or virtual objects are there present in your world and virtual reality is when you enter a computer world so how these two or how you can react with these two platforms is what these uh, developers are going to specifically do tech consultants so there are a lot of companies who are hiring tech cons consultants for immersive industry if you know about immersion immersion if you know about ar vr and you can consult which technology to use as you can see like our mobile phones now there is a wide range of hardwares which are available in the uh, uh, in the market right now for few names like oculus like uh, gear vr like uh, htc vive so all of these companies are creating wide range of virtual reality or augmented reality hardware but then which to be used for which specific purpose that is what these tech consultants do and then experience testers these are the guys who actually test this whether it is creating a headache to me whether it is working perfectly whether there is a problem in it that is all going to be done by these experience uh, testers. Now, moving forward, I'll just quickly take you through a video where you will get a little insight about how this whole virtual reality and augmented reality can change today's working. To design and create meaningful experiences, to begin with the blank page, the blank space. You ask yourself, what is the best way to illustrate an idea that can truly transform the way we design? What are the best tools to bring those ideas to life? How do we communicate ideas that change our view of the world? And design how it will present our inspiration to others. We look for new ways to express our message. Using the best of human experiences to share those ideas. Or reinvent the way we reveal creation to audiences. Expanding our understanding of how we think. And train for the seemingly impossible. Have an idea. 
and change the world. That's what we do best. So I think so. This gave you a little insight about you know how's the work going to change in your future. And just because of these technologies are there, work is going to be much more simpler. And as Eddie said, it is going to be much more immersed. Where you know you 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 don't have to sit down and visualize how this thing would work. You can actually go into virtual reality, and before even you know uh, visualizing, you can see it how it works. So that's going to definitely change the future. Now let's move quickly to the artificial intelligence. As Adi also said, there are so many different different parts of artificial intelligence. But then currently in gaming industry, artificial intelligence is used uh, uh, into a very uh, various fields. Specifically, if you if you are talking about augmented and virtual reality, tracking is something which is very difficult. Like if I uh, if I want to augment something and put it on a desk, then to just track that point and keep it in the memory that is where artificial intelligence is working right now the best best example would be uh, the pokemon if you have played pokemon game the ar version of it you can see what's happening with it it's so perfect your mobile phone understands where exactly in this world that pokemon is that's what artificial intelligence is doing simulations so let's say if you want you you create a car and you want to see how it breaks and um, uh, if you want to see how a metal get crushed or if you want to see how uh, a cloth gets torn torn apart this is all ai can do for you similarly optimizing if you have something which is uh, working on a platform which has tremendous or huge calculations ai can solve those calculations and make your system free you can understand which things to not work on or where your cpu can work more and where it can work less so this is somewhere uh, this is something which uh, artificial intelligence can help you out with game and experience analytics ai can analyze how your experience is and it can tell you whether this is a good or a bad experience whether this game is going to uh, boom in the market or is it, is it not is it good for kids is it not good for kids so all of these analytics can be quickly driven by artificial intelligence online online cloud platforms now you have you must be hearing you are you, you are actually being a part of all this online structure right now the webinars which we are having it is also somewhere or the other it's also getting stored online and the way it is getting streamed it is all done by ais so this is where uh, also if you play multiplayer games you know organizing or getting all of these players together and then connecting them into this one small world is what ai uh, will help you with scores now whenever you do any kind of scoring in the game whenever you save whenever you log in it remembers what was your last part or wherever you have left so all of that can be done by artificial intelligence game mechanics like if i you know jump from the cliff i fall down okay if if i have like a massive army which is going to you know follow me or uh, is if, if there are game players which are going to you know interact with you these are ai players so this is where this ai is uh, helping us and like that there are many parts we, we, we can i can give you small small places also like uis people have started adding artificial intelligence to uh, to your uis also depending upon what's your age or depending upon what's uh, who are you you know the whole ui of the game can be changed so that is what people are now moving into so these kind of uh, things are widely used nowadays uh, i'm not speaking about future but then now if you want to get into these kind of uh, career opportunities then these are the specific terms you know which you can google out and see what people are doing with it so that brings me to the final thing which are all the softwares which we can use to create all of such experiences so if you want to get into or if you want to get a uh, get a taste of it like you know uh, just uh, sitting at home uh, you know want to just fiddle around with few of the tools then these are the few tools which uh, people use a lot in this industry one is photoshop one is 3ds max one is marmoset tool bag so photoshop it's a very famous image editing tool where people go and edit their images and all 3d max is something where people go and create 3d 
uh, experiences like any 3D objects you want to create, you can you know create using 3ds Max. Marmo Set is a look dev tool where you can create a good look dev and you can see how this whole thing would look like in a game engine. Substance is also one of a very important tool when it comes to creating textures and creating uh, those hyper realistic uh, uh, details onto any objects. Uh, you have Quixel, one of one of uh, uh, again a hyper realistic texturing tool. Uh, game engines like Unity and Unreal are there, which uh, which are uh, supposed to be the best in the market right now. And uh, engines specifically Unity and Unreal, they are free to use. So if you want to just to get a taste of these engines, you can just go and download it from their sites and you know start fiddling around with it. Uh, Maya is one of the tool which is. Uh, uh, which is widely used in this industry as well as there is one more emerging tool which is called as blender which is very new to the industry but it is an open source tool so you don't have to pay for licenses it's again free you can go on uh, blender's website you can just download and start using it so these are few of the tools which you know you can uh, try to work try to see whether you are building interest in it with that uh, you have a couple of languages which you uh, which you can go through like c sharp JavaScript, these are the two languages which are widely used in this industry. Moving for, uh, toward the last point, like which are the, uh, which are, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is uh, all of these things, whatever we just spoke about, okay, where all it can be used. As I, as I told you now, AR, VR, and games, it is not only used in uh, the gaming industry. Now it has started, you know, diluting into many more different, different industries. So gaming industries is for sure one of the industry where uh, these all technologies are very widely used. But then uh, one of one of uh, the emerging industry that is architecture, where you know architecture creates a plan and a viewer actually you know and we create a, a whole 3D experience for the viewers to look into, so that people go and visit that place, not actually physically going there, but sitting in their drawing rooms. Education field, you know, imagine if I teach something through VR, you know, you will start understanding it more clearly. If I write something and if I tell you, okay, go and memorize it, you have to visualize it. Okay. Uh, let's say if I tell you functionality of a brain, you can visualize it. But then if you, if I, if I can make it into an experience and give it to you on a VR kit, you would probably get into it and you can see how it is functioning. Okay. I feel... Uh, VR is going to be next best tool in the education uh, section. Training, if I want to train something, someone on something like a process, how to paint a car when it comes to <coughs> service, okay, you can you can do it by using uh, VR and AR. Presentations, now if you want to make a, a very interactive presentation, uh, right now in this situation, let's say if you want to create a presentation and you uh, need to present it across few people and you know you want to make it feel like you are sitting in an enclosed room VR can solve this problem right away right now uh, e-commerce again e-commerce is already been taken uh, already adopted AR and VR both the technologies uh, because you know visualizing a product becomes very simple for them simulation industry as I have already mentioned if you are you know, a car maker and if you want to test the car, crash test the car, you know, who's going to always build a new car and crash it and you know, uh, throw it in yards? Better would be you simulate until you get clear results. Once you get a clear, clear result, then you make one car, do a crash test and it's done. So things are becoming more and more simpler. As these are not the only fields, but these are the fields which are right now booming up. So if you are planning to make a career in uh, these kind of sections, we would suggest you to get into these few topics and research about them. If you have, uh, if you feel like uh, you know something uh, would be interesting, you, you you kind of get into that. <clears throat> uh, that's all uh, what I wanted to share about uh, the whole industry. Before moving forward, on the next question. No, after I telling you about all of these things, the final concept is how do we learn all of this? Is there any colleges or you know, how do I start understanding stuff? Uh, so first of all, I would want to tell you is as these are very new technologies, 
okay whatever you see on the internet is written by someone is uh, uh, whether it is authenticated it is not authenticated no one knows so rather just going ahead blindly and following someone and you know then understanding why oh, i just wasted my time these are the few key points which i would you know always tell all my students to go through first of all don't you know think overboard and think about okay i am going to create an iron man suit work on very simple thing okay just take a small concept how i can develop this and then start researching about that next would be learn only essential tools there are so many tools and there are so many softwares i would suggest you don't go through all of them and check them out okay what it is what is that i would suggest you go to just essentials for this small concept what are those tools i will be needing just only learn that go step by step finally read theory as this is a technical industry you would need to understand theories you would need to understand you know how this works what are the calculations behind it so you know i would i would just suggest read about it and then do whatever you are doing and finally as i said internet you have a lot of things about if you try to find one thing you will get 10 different answers about it so you know just try to understand and find out a right mentor for you see who are researching who are the knowledgeable people in the industry try to communicate with them and then start taking the data otherwise google is going to put you on a different different path where you will be at the end you will go and get confused uh, with the whole concept so these are the four key points which i would you know the question if you anyone wants to ask like how do we learn this is how you learn about the softwares about the things you will need to come up with the question like you know i want to learn this then find out who are the you know educators for that and then go and learn from them so these are the four points uh before moving forward or this this is uh where i i think so i i gave you all the insights i gave you all the things about what these uh industries are all about finally i'll just move on to the questions if you have any questions please write in the comment box so that we can answer you uh beer itself so i can see there are a uh, couple of questions uh first question is can i get into gaming after 12th arts yes definitely uh game art as i told you in this starting game art and development there are two sections for it so if you get into the art side uh definitely uh, we need uh, people from arts uh, the main concept is, uh, is you should understand uh, how a object is uh, how to create it um, you know how, what would be its texture so for that you don't need to get into all the coding and all of those things so after 12th definitely you can get into game art <clears throat> so there is one question can we only stick to one design part of game design like only face body making and pose making or background design or we need to learn everything yes so now uh, from the learning outcome you need to learn how the whole game process is like if i want to make a game how do i make it that's the whole process you need to know but all of these things all of these different different processes are being dealt with small small teams and those teams those artists are only concentrating only on one part like character designers only design characters prop artists only make props environment artists they only make environments but then they know for what i am making this environment so you need to know about uh, the process of games but then uh, you you can pick one part of it and start you know researching over that next uh, sir python applicable python definitely python is applicable but then uh, whenever python is uh, usually in game industry till now uh, whatever games i have been uh, with and whatever uh, games i have worked with um <clears throat> i have worked with uh, python mostly we have used for ml machine learning and artificial intelligence Uh, if any tool needs to be created for a game engine, I would you know create it in Python. But then, whole game creating in Python, uh, you can. But then, these engines are more flexible with C sharp. 
I hope this solved your question, DK. There is one more question. Can I learn somewhere in Bombay? Uh, obviously, uh, Framebox uh, is the institution. Uh, for this, I would I would like to have Ravi sir also with us. Uh, you know, we would get a proper insight about you know how we can learn and where we can learn. Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, Sanaya, of course, uh, uh, I would not say Framebox is the only institute. There are other institutes also. So as Vital suggested, please uh, research. Uh, obviously, we do claim that uh, our training methodology are pretty well industry oriented, and we do try to make sure that we give the most updated and relevant programs needed. But uh, uh, in in Mumbai, yeah, uh, Framebox definitely is offering these programs. You can definitely check on uh, other institutes also uh, where they offer in. South Mumbai, I am not sure if you have something in South Mumbai side. Uh, that's somewhere towards town. I, I don't think so. We have any renowned players over there. Uh, to get into your university, no. Uh, percentage is not the criteria. Your interest and your uh, passion is what is needed. And uh, the industry opens uh, the doors to you. There's, there's no percentage criteria. This is not a degree program. So this is more of a vocational learning and definitely percentage is not the minimum criteria. Your interest and your uh, creativity is what gets you into the industry. Uh, do we have something else coming up? Uh, uh, Vishal, can you please uh, make the feedback form? Yes, yes. I have uh, uh, guys. I have shared the feedback forms with you uh, on the live chat, so you can uh, just fill in the feedback form so that we can understand or we can, you know, try to understand how we can make our webinars more better, as well as how was your experience over it. And anyone wanting any more details, you can definitely uh, write back to us, and we will do our best to give you the best of information, uh, whatever we can provide. Surely. So uh, with that, I think we'll come to the end of the session. I would really like to thank once again HSNC University. Uh, I would like to personally thank Dr. Bagla. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Niranjan sir uh, for giving us this platform once again to share insights with you. I'm sure we'll be coming soon again with uh, some other additional details and maybe another webinar, which will be more insightful for you all as well. So till then, uh, you know, do subscribe to our channel to keep any regular updates. And uh, take care of yourself and be safe. Thank you so much for being such a lovely audience. And we do hear, want to hear from you guys. Please do send the comments and your suggestions, your queries, and it will help us to work and make things better for you. Thank you so much.